Have you, any of you folks ever um, had an unexpected guest show up and one of the first things that came out of your mouth, even if you didn't mean to, even if it came across a little gruff, was, um, what the heck are you doing here? Why are you here? I tell you, that has been a question that for centuries many people have asked about one significant human came 2,000 years ago, and even though they gave him a lot of flack, and many people ask him why he came, Jesus answers it real simple. I mean, we don't need to make this difficult. You know, it's taken the church about 2,000 years to uh, mess up Christianity, the real Christianity, that's what I'd like to call it. And uh, so I just, wanna, I just wanna nail those two questions down, why, or that question down with two answers. Why in the world did Jesus come? It's pretty simple, you know. Um, I would say to a lot of folks, he, he <laughs> and, and maybe the church has done this, maybe it was a bad preacher or a bad teacher or maybe some bad parenting, but I can tell you why he didn't come. He didn't come to make us smarter. He didn't come to 100%, 100% to make us healthier. He, he didn't come to f fix our mental health completely, fix our physical ailments completely. He didn't come to make us wealthy. He didn't come to uh, just make us better people when it comes to taking care of other people. Um, there's nothing wrong with any of that list that I just mentioned. The problem that we get into oftentimes is that is not exactly Jesus' words, right? And so in this talk that I do every week, we just want to get right down to the bottom line of what Jesus said. And he will tell us his own words why he came. The first reason he came was to fix our greatest problem, to fix our greatest problem. Now, a lot of people don't like to say this. And that, heck, there's even some churches that have taken that S-I-N out of their, their worship songs. But the reality is we can not talk about sin. We can omit that word from our vocabulary. But the problem is we still got, we still got a problem. We're sinners by nature, sinners by choice. And I always tell folks, if you ever question that, all you got to do is go to the nearest pre-K and you'll find a whole bunch of kids that you really don't have to teach them how to pick up a plastic bat and hit their buddy over the head with it. We're sinners by nature. We're sinners by choice. And we don't sin. Uh, we're not sinners because we sin. We, are, we sin because we're sinners. And Jesus knew that. And so when he came onto the scene, he says, look, I am the solution to that. I heard someone say this the other day. There's a one in one chance that uh, <laughs> we're going to die one day. My question to everyone, and I know it's a bad question. It sounds horrible. It sounds pushy. I don't mean for it to, but what happens to us on the other side of our last breath? We have to answer that question. And Jesus said it plain and simple in Luke chapter 19. He says, look, here, here's, here's my purpose. I came to seek and to save that which was lost. So the first reason Jesus shows up in our world, in our life, is to fix our greatest problem, and that's sin, and make sure that we have a home in heaven on the other side of that last breath. The second reason, Jesus made it very clear. And this is one that so many people, I've seen evangelists, I've seen the, you know these, these kids at Halloween, they go to these different uh, Christian functions where they just scare the devil out of them to have them make a decision because everybody wants to go to heaven. But we forget about one thing. Jesus had a twofold purpose. And G let me just read Jesus' words, right? He says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Here's what Jesus said. I have come that they can have life and have it to the fullest. See, Jesus doesn't just leave us stranded out there. He, when he comes into our life, he is, begun, he is going to begin to change our attitudes first the way we think, the way we react. And um, as they say here in one of our programs at Crossbrand, Mending Fences, Jesus is all about not leaving us alone. That's one of the things he said, he said, I'm never gonna forsake you. And in doing so, like our Mending Fences people say, it's all about the hurts, the habits, the hangups. And we are all prone to those things. Even the most seasoned believer, has hurts, has habits, has hangups. And Jesus said, look, I'm gonna help you with those. I'm not gonna leave you stranded. If you become a Christian when you're 30 years old, 
and you don't pass away until you're 80. Can you imagine living all of those years without Jesus? Jesus said that ain't part of the deal. The deal Jesus with made with us says, I'm going to come and fix your greatest problem, which is sin. That gets you into heaven. And number two, I'm going to come and I'm going to help you and I'm going to transform you um, a, 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 into a new creation was his words, or the Apostle Paul's words later. So the bottom line is this. There's two H's. If you can, Anybody can remember this. The two H's of Jesus. Heaven later, help now. Heaven later, help now. So I don't know if you buy into the bottom line, but you may be in a situation where you don't really remember that defining moment in your life when you invited Jesus to change your life. But don't forget, as simple as this may sound, it takes one conversation with Jesus to change your life. And today, I invite you to do that. You can do it simply, plainly, right now. I mean, if you're in a pickup, pull over. If you're uh, on a tractor, pull, you pull over. And if you don't want to pull over, just, just reach out to Him and simply say, Jesus, I got a problem. I know what it is. Please forgive me and please change me. That's the bottom line, folks. God bless.